Good morning, darlings. And for those who are here this afternoon, good afternoon. We know me. I never stick to the script. Uh, that said, that even is about my real life. A week ago, what day was it? I think it was the 20, let's see. 16th of September, 2011. I was in my, I was in the St. Louis University Medical School uh, hospital in a room that was very nice and beautiful that my doctor had arranged I to have. And that day I had had this very fancy scan. I felt like a mummy. And because uh, they bind you up and they put you in a tube and all the tube does and the binding does is confuse one. Uh, and it makes a lot of noise. Anyway, I came out of it. They didn't put you to sleep. And my doctor looked at me and said two things. He said, the cancer you've got is not curable, and there's no such thing as chemo light. So that's a fantasy. And I looked at him, I said, you're serious, aren't you? He said, yeah. Okay. okay. I swear to God. That's what I said, okay. And uh, at that moment, this incredible peace came over. I mean, I can't describe it. And I wasn't afraid. You know, everybody runs out of river like Huckfan. Everybody. We all die. And you get to a certain age, and you sort of nod your head and say, I guess it's my turn. Furthermore, the best part of the deal is, uh, I realized something, that I could have a certain certainty in my life. I mean, and you see, I learned a long time ago the gift of acceptance. Yeah. See, I learned how to get my head around things that were challenging. To get my, I learned, excuse me, remember, those of you who had me a semester before, you know, I used to cough like hell. <coughs> well, the great cough chase was the reason we ended up here. And the joke is, it wasn't what had me, you know, nailed me. No, no. The cancer was totally different, which just shows to go you, don't be too certain. So my son then shows up. And my son is very cool. He's 45. Uh, occasionally he's a pain in the ass, but that's every son's right. And uh, he uh, said, well, Pop, you know what we're going to do? He's in the aviation business. I'm going to get my friends to give us a jet, and we're flying to California and look at the ocean. And I looked at him and I said, no way, Jose. He said, what do you mean? I said, you and I are going on an adventure. He said, well, you, will you get in my car? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we're going to drive to a where I grew up, and then we're going to drive to California, hang out with all our friends. And he said, wow, that's cool. And then he looked at me, he said, you sure? He said, of course. Think of the gift this is. We're getting to have this conversation that very few fathers and sons ever have. 
we're going to be, our souls are going to be with each other in this moment. And we're going to be able to be naked with each other and tell the truth to each other. And I said, that's a gift. And seven days later, I believe that even more strongly. So he said, yeah, that's cool. My doctor thought, wow, that's cool too. And then he said, uh, well, what are you going to do about the medication? I said, I'm going on the natch. You know, no chemo. Uh, he said, well, you better see him. I said, okay, we'll see him. I mean, like I was suffering. Remember I told you about, you know, being able to discern, you know, critical thinking? That's really critical thinking. So I meet one oncologist, lovely man, looked like a movie star, and uh, witty and cool and everything else. And he started selling me, you know, the snake oil of, uh, uh, of uh, chemotherapy. And I just nodded my head. And uh, then his boss came back Friday. And his boss was this lovely Chinese gentleman. And he was very sweet. He was very compassionate. And he made sure I understood that there were advantages to chemo. And I, you know, nodded my head. And then he made me laugh. He promised me seven to 11 months with this new chemo. Of course, he did mention there was a downside. Guess what the downside was? I'd be dead within the first month. I thought that was absolutely silly. He said, well, your kidneys might blow up on you. I said, I really want that. I can have dialysis for seven to 11 months. And uh, so I turned to my doctor and I said, it's the natch, right? He said, it's the natch. I mean, you know. And besides that, I get to eat special brownies. Mm, legally. And uh, in the name of health and in the name of my new appetite. Yeah, you do lose your appetite with this stuff. So I'm flying, you know. So my son and I, thank, thanks to God's infinite wisdom, has, we're going to Omaha where I grew up, and then we're going to drive across America. And then, oh yes, before the weekend before that, my three daughters are coming and we're having a girls weekend. And they are so cool. See, each one of them was involved in this decision. This was not made independent of their in input. What I want to ensure you. So what I have to say to each one of you is this. Sometimes in your lives, you're going to be presented with challenging opportunities. Opportunities that I consider to suffer. But you see, that's the only way we really get in touch with our lives. And sometimes in these opportunities, we discover how to really and truly communicate with the people who are really and truly important to us. You know, that doesn't happen just walking down the street singing a song. Huh? That's generally the result of some inspiration. And that happened for me. So, you know, if you're in a writing for electronic media, when you write, write from here, not here. Here's stupid. Here's real. Here's what your education is all about. And, you know, be clear about critical thinking. 
about looking at what's going on in your life. And as you develop characters about how they relate to each other and to each, and to their families, to their, you know, their friends. <coughs> Excuse me. And for those of you in uh, your capstones, write films that are about, about something. Don't write about some disball and his girlfriend who are splitting up because uh, she wouldn't get rid of the tampons. No, don't, don't do that. Write something, that's, write something that elevates you, that shows the world you care about the world and you care about each other. And then, my wonderful David Brown and I, you know, we have this great class, South Park and Family Guy. We almost gave Dr. Evans a heart attack when we brought this class to Dr. Weitzel, and she brought it to him. I mean, he thought every student should sign a release slip because we might corrupt them. Well, that was the whole idea. To corrupt their sort of talismatic, roped thinking. This was about telling them there's a university is a moral institution and you should develop a sense of morality here and judgments about how to make moral judgments. The South Park does that. <coughs> Did I mention this uh, non-curable disease? Oh, it's called cancer. They call it small cell cancer. I find that's amusing. Uh, yeah, because it kills you in a big hurry. You know, it's funny. And... Uh, but I'm still here. I'm going to take this incredible trip and see my old friends I went to high school and grade school with. I'm going to hang with my son in a way that's so amazingly special that I don't know what I could ask for more. It's a gift. And uh, I'm still relaxed. I'm still pain-free. I'm still without any judgment about this. And I'm just cool. I mean, I can't think of any better way to celebrate my life by ending it as well as I've lived it. I will embrace the life I have in this moment as the life I have of truth. And you can't ask for much more, or at least I could. It's been great being at Lindenwood. Yes, Lindenwood's like every institution that ever exists. It's goofy at times. But I must say, I was surprised at the quality of my brothers and sisters on the faculty. They are good men and women. Yeah, some of them are a little cool here and others, but fundamentally, they care about you. And uh, the administration, I mean, they're down in many ways. I mean, I was Dr. Evans' first a academic hire, and he has treated me only with the greatest freedom and respect any teacher can imagine. Uh, and some of the stuff that goes on here is goofy, but as I said before, every institution is goofy. I mean, yeah, that's going to be part of your life the rest of your life. Goofy. I mean, nobody, life ain't simple. So enjoy it. And enjoy your education. Really let this place nourish you. Nourish yourself. Nourish your friends. And then you can really embrace the moments of your life each day. 
So thank you for the privilege of being your professor. You notice I didn't work, use the word teacher. Anyone who's ever been in my classes knows. I have always told you, I can't teach you diddly. I can help you learn. And that has always been my mission, to help you learn, to discover in yourself what you already know. That has been my great privilege, and thank you for allowing me to have it. See you later.